Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, from time to time, people ask me about my machine tools, you know, how they've held up, whether I've had to fix anything on them. Uh, and I just made a minor repair to the, the Grizzly milling machine here, so I wanted to give you a quick update on that. Specifically, the issue was with the potentiometer that controls the spindle speed on the control panel. Uh, originally, the machine came with this uh, multi-revolution potentiometer, and I, I'd had a problem once before where a wire inside that potentiometer that connects the moving wipe to uh, one of the, the terminals, um, over time the connection fatigued and so the wire broke. Uh, and that first time I actually took the potentiometer apart and soldered the connection back together so uh, was able to restore original functionality. Well just recently it happened again and rather than fixing the potentiometer again, which I probably could have done, uh, I decided to just replace it actually with a different potentiometer. Now for the record, I'm sure I could have gotten a direct replacement part from Grizzly, uh, but I didn't really want to wait for shipping to get the milling machine back up and running. And knowing how these digital speed control systems generally work, I realized that I didn't need to use an identical replacement part in this instance. Okay, with a typical digital speed control, of course, you're going to have some sort of a microprocessor, uh, and then that is going to require some sort of supply voltage. So we'll have an, an input voltage, probably like 6 or 12 volts DC. Uh, then you're going to have an analog to digital converter, which is part of the microcontroller unit. Uh, that basically reads a voltage and converts it into a digital number that is accessible to the microcontroller's programming. So I have an ADC that's going to read the voltage on the middle wipe of a potentiometer. And that potentiometer then is just going to be connected between the reference voltage, you know, which is probably going to be the same as the input voltage to the microprocessor uh, and ground. And then it basically is going to act as a voltage divider. So as you turn the knob on the potentiometer, the voltage that is read by the ADC is going to vary anywhere from zero to the input voltage. Uh, and the number will vary anywhere from, again, zero to uh, whatever its maximum value is, which depends on the resolution of the ADC. So uh, it could be 256, 512, uh, 1024, just depending on how many bits uh, the ADC can read. Anyway, uh, then you're going to have some sort of an output uh, signal that goes to a control circuit that drives the motor. Uh, so there's your control box and then you know here's your your electric motor. Uh, so the this circuit could be as simple as uh, a single transistor driven by a PMW signal, um, or it could be significantly more uh, complicated than that. But the bottom line is there's going to be some control signal going out from the microprocessor uh, to a circuit that takes a, a much more powerful input voltage uh, and uses that to drive the motor. And that's not really significant because 
that output is just going to be controlled by what the ADC or what the microcontroller is doing with the input from the ADC. So if our potentiometer is the part that's broken, then all we really are concerned about is this potentiometer. And the way that this circuit works, it actually doesn't matter what the overall resistance of this potentiometer is, at least in theory because regardless of what the total resistance here is, uh, as the, the dial is turned, as the wipe is moved along the variable resistor, the voltage is still going to vary from zero to the input voltage. Um, now, we don't want to go too far from the original value because if we reduce the overall resistance, then that's going to increase the current draw. And if we draw too much current, then either we could cause things to heat up or uh, we could just drain more current than the microcontroller power supply is designed to handle and you know, cause all kinds of problems due to under voltage on the MCU. Uh, by the same token, if we made this resistance you know, much, much higher than what the original was, uh, then conceivably we could have a situation where, you know, in theory the ADC doesn't require any input power from what it's measuring. In practice, it's going to draw a little bit. I mean, probably just like a few microamps, but, uh, but if we made this resistance so high that it couldn't draw enough to get an accurate reading, uh, then that could also be a problem. The bottom line though is as long as we stick to a potentiometer that has somewhat similar resistance, we should be fine and we should be able to substitute just about any potentiometer for the original one in this kind of a circuit. Well, I measured the overall resistance of the original Grizzly potentiometer and found that it was about 5 kilo ohms. I didn't have a 5 kilo ohm potentiometer on hand, but I did have a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. And so this is what I replaced it with. Uh, you know, since it's higher resistance, it's going to draw a little bit less current, and so I wasn't worried about overloading anything or causing the circuit to heat up. At the same time, where it's only double the original resistance, I wouldn't expect that difference to be enough to uh, limit the current to the ADC in a way that would, you know, compromise measurement accuracy. Now, of course, this is just a regular 120 degree potentiometer as opposed to the fancy multi-revolution potentiometer that Grizzly used. But after installing this and using it a few times, I'd say this was actually an upgrade because now I can go from minimum spindle speed to maximum spindle speed just with a quick turn of the dial instead of having to dial it all the way in or dial it all the way out like I did with the multi-revolution potentiometer. I guess in theory this is a little bit less precise because it takes a, a smaller rotation of the, the knob to affect the same difference in spindle speed. In practice the rest of the spindle speed control system isn't precise enough for this to be a problem. You know, I don't have a problem rotating this just a little bit if I only want to increase or decrease the spindle speed a little bit.
So in hindsight, I would say that that multi-revolution potentiometer on the uh, Grizzly speed control panel may be a slight weakness of the design, both because dialing it all the way in and out is a little bit laborious, or more so than it needs to be, uh, and perhaps more importantly because that wire that has to flex inside the potentiometer as it uh, is screwed in and out uh, is a, a failure point. You know, the connection tends to fatigue and then the potentiometer fails. Uh, but it was not a difficult thing to fix, uh, and I'm pretty pleased with the result now that I've made the repair. So hopefully you found this video helpful, and until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.